So if you saw last week's video, you should remember Ryan. Hi, I'm Ryan. I am from Colorado Springs, Colorado. Before Ryan left though, we wanted to sit down with him and see what he thought about his week here and all the work that he had done. Before we dive into Ryan's week with us, uh, we want to put out a little call to arms because we really could use some help with sawmilling in the next couple weeks. And we don't want to talk about the video schedule because we're going to tweak it a little bit now that summer's here and our work schedule is changing. If you've seen some of our previous videos, you know that we have a monster pile of logs down in the wood yard. And by logs, I mean just humongous logs. And we knew the sawmill was coming sometime middle end of May. We didn't know exactly when, depended on Steve, the sawmill operator's schedule. But he is going to be here this Saturday with the mill. So this video goes out on Friday, Saturday the mill shows up, and for the next hopefully two weeks, maybe a little bit longer, we're gonna be sawmilling every day, all day, and just trying to get that knocked out. And this is one of those times when we could use as many hands on deck as possible. The faster we can get done the sawmilling, the faster we can get back to boat work, which is really what we want to be doing. Um, so if you're one of those folks who live somewhat locally and has gotten a hold of us and said that you would love to come and help, now would be a fantastic time for you to come and give us a hand. So please shoot us an email and let's get it scheduled. Uh, no experience needed, we just basically need a bunch of grunt labor. Um, so if you're willing to come do that, willing to help us roll some logs, move some lumber, see the mill in action, it would be really awesome and we would greatly appreciate your help. So although sawmilling is coming up for the next couple of weeks and we'll be taking a little hiatus on the actual boat work, the weather has been amazing lately. It's finally caught up and Steve has been doing a lot of work. In a, as in, he's been in the boathouse every single day. And as the only production person for the videos on this team, I can't be in both places at once. So in order to avoid missing some of those steps and not getting that out to you guys, I think we're gonna amend the video schedule so that I can have time to shoot and also to edit the videos. Boat work was a bit slow this past winter. These giant pieces of lead and wood uh, are just too big for us to bring in the house and paint. It was too cold out here to paint. And that allowed Alex to have lots of time to come out in the boathouse with me and film and the down days where I was out plowing snow or it was just too cold and snotty and gross out here to work. He had all day to edit. And now that the weather's better, that's just not the case. And he can't be in two places at once. So this winter when it was slow, it was pretty easy to put out a video every week and to do short Q&As. And we thought that that would help kind of keep the YouTube ad revenue up a little bit and keep the views consistent. It turns out those videos aren't very popular. Um, and monetarily speaking, they're just not worth the time it takes to make them, especially since we don't uh, put them through on Patreon to be billed because they're just short little videos. So the plan now is to go back to doing the bi-weekly videos. So videos every other week and we'll be able to show a lot more boat work in them and Alex will be able to save some of his sanity and not have to be in two places at once so often, which, you know, as you all know is a pretty challenging thing to do. So although we're going back to a bi-weekly schedule, that also means that the videos are going to be packed with a lot more boat work in them. That also means that I'm going to be able to possibly get backlogs on the videos, which will lead to next winter not being as slow of a time. I am hopefully going to be able to get ahead and we'll be able to release those videos a little bit more slowly and have something that will run continuously through the winter and make that a little bit more of an interesting experience for you guys. So thank you all for watching and helping us accomplish this dream. And a big thanks to everyone who has signed up and supported us on Patreon. Patreon's really what allowed us to quit our jobs and go full-time on the build and keep this project rolling. The YouTube ad revenue helps, but it's kind of peanuts compared to Patreon. So thank you so much. Even the folks who contribute just a dollar per video, it all adds up and really, really makes all of this possible. So thank you so much. And speaking of help, let's get back to Ryan and see how we actually ended up here. Well, I was watching a, a number of YouTube videos on craftsmanship and metalworking. Um, carpentry and YouTube's algorithm dropped Arabella in my lap and I was like yes please absolutely let's let's get some more of this watched every video from start to finish and you know by the time I was done I had decided this is how I'm spending a week of my vacation time I'm gonna send an email see what comes up yeah so on our end we got a really nice email from Ryan and He's like, hey, I like what you're doing, and I have some vacation time. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it, and would you mind if I flew out from Colorado and rented a car and came out and hung out with you for the week? And I was like, you want to spend your vacation with us? And 
sure, I'm not going to tell you no, and if you show up, we'll certainly put you to work, so. <laughs> <laughs> Your emails were very nice. <laughs> when you sent that email, did you expect to hear back from us, or what did you think would happen? You know, honestly, it was a shot in the dark, you know, throw, throw a dart out into the wind, see what came back. Yeah. So in terms of work, was it what you expected? You know, it was. It was, it was a lot of work, it was a lot of labor, um, you know, definitely some heavy lifting. Definitely some heavy lifting. Heavy lifting this time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about the uh, timbers we're working with? I mean, I know you know you see us with the logs on the log pile, and you see us with the big timbers, and I'm sure depending on the camera angle, sometimes they look tiny, and sometimes I'm sure they look huge. But how is it actually coming and like handling boat parts and future boat parts like in their entirety? I had forgotten how dense oak was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It is some of the heaviest stuff I've ever lifted. Heavy is right. Along with all the work on the bow and stern timbers we showed in the last video, we also prepped the massive stern timber. Running just one of these through the planer at a time was much easier, but it is still a very large and heavy piece to be working with. Here's the first piece of the stern assembly. So this is the main stern timber. Uh, we jointed it and ran it through the thickness planer, so it's brought down to just about its final dimension. And here is the pattern for it. So the next step will be to mark that out and slice it out and uh, get some uh, coats of oil and paint on it so that we don't have any issues with the wood drying out too much and checking. We got some good work done though. We got most of what we wanted accomplished. Yeah, yeah, we got a lot done. We got a lot of work done that would have been really hard for me to do by myself. So to have Ryan here and the two of us be able to bust hump and Alex be able to go work on videos or just to be free to move around and film was really awesome. Yeah, it's That's helpful big to help. have an extra hand. So uh, what was the most memorable part of this week? You know, definitely going out to the Cape and getting the locust logs. That that was definitely the, the highlight of the vacation out here. Disney. It was cool to go see uh, Cape Cod. Yeah, it was. I was expecting that. It was, it was a nice visit. Yeah, I mean, that was a uh, six hours round trip to Cape Cod and back. Yeah, it's so it was good. me and Ryan in the truck for six hours. All right, let's call that some locusts. Those locust logs are no joke. Locust is a very dense wood. These two logs alone likely weigh in at more than a ton and took some work getting off the trailer and pushed aside on our wood road. We got some locusts! We were super psyched. We uh, got contacted by Earthworm Landscaping out in East Tim Mass out on Cape Cod where they have a lot of black locusts. And they offered us to come and pick up what we wanted when they cut. So they cut down this big 100 year old black locust recently. And we took a ride down. Thankfully we bought the truck recently and we borrowed the trailer from Tom. Thank you again, Tom and I uh, went and picked up this locust. So this is how locust typically grows. It's crooked and the center's rotten and it's pretty gnarly. But for a lot of the stuff we need, that is okay. Um, for dead eyes, for Samson posts, for blank pins, for deck framing, none of it needs to be super long or crazy huge. So we'll know what we can get out of these and put it to good use. Uh, he's also working on rounding up a few more locust logs for us, probably another trailer load. Those will be smaller diameter, but they'll be cleaner and straighter. So for those, we might be able to get some of the rub rails and that kind of thing out of. But between these two bruisers, we totally should be able to get all of the dead eyes and the Samson posts and some deck framing, um, or maybe some hatch framing. So that's super exciting. We're really happy to have it. That's a good size locust. Look at the way the grain goes. Beautiful. Big circles. In terms of people, are we what you expected? Are we, do we represent ourselves well online? You know, you guys are great. <laughs> <laughs> You're authentic and very, very much what you put out into the world. Well, it's good to hear that we represent ourselves accurately. Yeah, and you're very hospitable. You know. We do our best. <laughs> <laughs> you fed me, you housed me. What more can a guy ask? 
I, I mean, you flew here and worked for free, yeah. so I feel like housing and food is the least you can do. <laughs> what was like you expected, and what was different than what you expected? You know, something that was definitely not what I expected was the, the scale of everything. You know, this, this boathouse is immense. You know, no problem fitting every inch of Arabella in here, and it's huge. Um, but then the, the wood yard is much closer than I had conceptualized when I was thinking about the property. Mm -hmm. It's just right over there. Yeah, yeah, it's not far. It's a short walk. Ryan, what are we doing? We're painting the end of these logs. With what? Paint sealer. Yeah, anchor sealer. Anchor sealer. Why are we doing that? Keep them from checking and chipping. Keep them from checking, yeah. So we haven't done this before, and I've heard about anchor seal in the past but I kind of wrongly assumed that it was just a way to sell paint. Um, Cause I'd always heard you just oil or paint the ends of the logs or the boards. But after talking to some more folks and doing a little more research, it seems like anchor seal will actually work better than just regular paint. Cause it's actually made to seal the ends of the logs. So we picked up a couple gallons and we're gonna try it out on these since they're gonna sit for a bit before we sawmill. And we'll see how it does, give it a test drive. So we're going to paint the spruce, we're going to paint the oak. I'm not going to worry about the pine because most of that's not the greatest anyways and it doesn't really check as badly as the other ones. Um, and we're not going to do the hemlock either because it's just work lumber so if it checks it's not really a big deal. Um, but we'll do the spruce and we'll do the oak and you know, we'll see if it makes a difference. Yeah, and you got to go to the livestock auction. That was a trip too. Yeah, we had the pig for the pig roast. Yeah, that was an experience for me alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the I'd, auction's definitely a, a good cultural, cultural experience. experience. <laughs> and I've been to a couple stock shows in my life, but not an actual livestock auction. Shit, so that, yeah. was, that was a And you're like, what am I bidding on? Well, off tomorrow, back to work on Monday. Back to the grind, yep. Back to the bank. Back to the bank. Turn you to your usual entertainment. Yeah. Yeah, this is a whole world away from banking. It is. <laughs> it is. To be sure. So do you think you would come back and help out again? I think I will. Yeah. yeah. Nice. You will definitely use more of my time and come down. Yeah, it's been a ride. It's been a pleasure working with you. Yeah, you too, man. <laughs> yeah, and you as well. Well, thanks again for coming out. It's been yeah, great having you. you. It's been a pleasure to be here. Having Ryan here was awesome. There was one little hiccup, though. We were loading uh, scrap steel into the back of the truck to take it over to the scrapyard this morning, and uh, he got a little overzealous throwing some of the metal in the back of the truck and uh, kind of took out our rear window on us. So thankfully, we have insurance, and it's not going to cost us anything, and... The insurance company will come and get it fixed on Wednesday, but uh, yeah, the truck's got a little extra ventilation for uh, right now. <laughs> but you know, shit happens. It's not a big deal. Um, but yeah, it was kind of the the one little hiccup of the week. All right, so short and sweet video this week. But tune in for the next video. We cut the keel timber to its final shape this way. Uh, we also flipped the ballast keel on top of it and fared that down to its final shape and painted it as you can see. We also had our open house where we flipped everything right side up and laid everything out so people could kind of get an idea of the scale of what we were building. And for you astute viewers, I also did this at the party. So that should be fun to watch. Finally, we're going to be at the Wooden Boat Show in Mystic Harbor this year. Uh, it's going to be the weekend of June 24th, and we'll be there for all three days. We're going to have a booth next to Jamestown Distributors. So come on by. We'll have all of our merchandise, and we're looking forward to meeting and chatting with you. Mm -hmm.